Day two, we had found a great place to camp, a nice place to beach our boats, a sandy beach to set up our tents and sit around the fire in. There was even a grassy knoll for those who didn't want to camp in the sand. There was an inside rock bar that had incredible rocks in it, and I grabbed a few. There were caves to explore, the canyon views were beautiful. Mitch brought some cigars and we enjoyed them around the campfire, sitting in the comfortable sand. We had successfully navigated our first class through rapids, and everything was going great. Little did we know that day three would throw mm -hmm. us a curveball and end in disaster. We started day three with high spirits. The day was sunny, but we had a headwind that at times blew us backwards if we stopped paddling. The steep canyon walls were beautiful, but shadowed the river, and we welcomed the few moments when the sun reached the river bottom and warmed our wetsuits. We spent most of the day head down and paddling against the wind. Needless to say, not a lot of video was taken during the day. We didn't make good time with the headwind, but luckily the wind did die down later in the evening. We were approaching our next major obstacle, Cabin Rapids a series of class three rapids that span over a half mile. I wanted to stop and scout out the rapid, but we stopped way too soon to get a good view of anything. We got back in our boats and head down river. Everyone was just raring to go, and so we just hit it. The head of the rapid is blocked by huge house-sized boulders. It is a literal maze of narrow passageways and streams that sometimes are only a couple feet wide. You have to navigate that to get to the rapids, not having any idea of what laid ahead of us. We navigated the maze of huge boulders and hit the rapids below. Imagine this. You hear the deafening roar of the rapids below with no idea of what they look like or how difficult they will be. You are navigating a maze of boulders, not knowing which next corner would lead you to the rapids below. It was exhilarating. Fear and adrenaline pumped through our veins. Rich got it all on GoPro, and the best way I can think to do it is just to play the video live, and I'll just narrate it. All right, here we are. We're coming to I think it's called Cable Rapids. Look at that up there. Isn't that amazing? Man, who would want to live here? Who could live here? This place is inhospitable. You talk about man being hard on the environment. In this place, the environment is hard on man. Okay, here we go. Approaching the maze, there's the house-sized boulder. And come on, it's it's a small house. It's house size. It's another one ahead of us. Uh, excitement is building. I might uh, edit some of the slow spots. All right, I took out that little slow spot. It's all the same. I just took out the little boring spots. There's another big rock to our right. And we're coming up on it. You can tell Rich's adrenaline's flowing. I'm going left, you motherfuckers! He's like ready to go.
there. See the water's pulling me backwards. I'm trying to paddle for it, but I'm not moving. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Pitch went left where the current's pulling you, but it's a dead end. You gotta go right. The water flow splits right there. A who? <laughs> so far! <laughs> so far. Look at this narrow passage. Pretty awesome. Good thing you don't have a fucking super ass long boat down this shit, huh? Go ahead, Rich. Can I get around you? Yeah, it sounds awesome. I can see Wes's raft. It's upside down. Just fucking with you. Nice knowing you, dude. Yep. <sighs> Man, how fun is this? You fucking can't beat it. You gotta pay for this shit. Oh boy, here we go. Fuck yeah, babe. Fuck this shit up. Fuck it up. Fucking awesome. I went more left here. Ah! I think Rich has broke his paddle. Not sure though. And if you watch right here, Mitch is going backwards. Going backwards. You fucking broke my paddle! Did you? Yeah. Oh my god. You guys decided to go down backwards? I did that backwards. You got your firewood wet, bitch. I went backwards to do that shit. Oh my god. So we wanted to stop and scan out the river. That's why we were pulling over. But Rich is like, no, I'm going. I'm going. He's driven this long. He's going. And when he came around this corner, it was like this. Oh, shit. And so he went, broken paddle and all. And we all had no choice but to follow him.
richest GoPro got knocked off his boat and is dragging underwater, so I am switching to footage we took the next day. Rich's boat was capsized and floating down river, with Rich holding on to it for dear life. I wasn't far behind him, so I saw the whole thing. He was dragged down rapids, and somehow in the middle of this rapid he stood up and righted his boat. At the time it must have been a Herculean moment. He was still outside of his boat, holding on, but it was right side up now. He managed to stop his boat and himself on a large rock in the middle of the stream. I saw his paddle sticking straight up out of the water, and I tried to paddle to it, but after a couple paddle strokes, I realized there was no way to make it against the current. There was another rock protruding near Rich, and I managed to step stop on it near him to give him any help I could. Mitch soon stopped on another protruding rock between us. Rich was standing next to his boat lodged on a large rock in the middle of the river. With Mitch and I nearby on our own rocks, we were close but just far enough away we could not be of any help. Rich climbed in his boat and pushed off and down the river he went. He made it through the rapids and made it to a slow spot then paddled over to the edge. And to his credit, and to a cameraman etiquette, the first thing on his mind was to write his GoPro camera. Mitch was next to leave. It took him a moment to dislodge himself from the rock he was pressed against. He made it a ways down the river, but got caught in the middle of the most dangerous spot on the rapids. He was knocked out of his boat, and his boat was firmly pressed against the rock in the middle of the river. He floated downstream and crawled to the safety of the shore. Luckily, Rich got some of it on GoPro from downstream. Where's your paddle? <laughs> Where's your boat? I gave Mitch a second to get ahead of me, and then I pushed off. Or I should say I tried to push off. The current was too strong and kept me pinned to the rock I was next to. I had to physically get out of my boat and push it around the rock, and then quickly jump back on. I ended up going in between the rock I was on and the rock Mitch was on. A tight squeeze. Trying desperately to get to the middle of the stream where the main current was, I got stuck on another side rock and tipped a bit. I was completely out of position and in dire straits. I pushed off and dug in for fast water. I was almost there when I hit a large rock angled perfectly to tip my boat over. I was completely submerged, life vest and all. It was then, I believe, my action camera left my head, never to be seen again. I guess for air as if it was my last. Panic, adrenaline, shock all filled my body at once. My one goal was to make it to the bank, to survive. The stream was deep in this spot and I couldn't touch the bottom. I frantically swam for the shore, pushing my kayak ahead of me. I got closer to the stream bank and felt the ground beneath my feet. I pushed harder for the bank. I glanced up and saw Mitch's boat 
tacoed on a rock ahead of me. My boat was now full of water and gear and weight, I am sure, an excess of a thousand pounds. It was slowly pulling me downstream towards a huge rapid. My feet barely touched the ground and neck deep in water, I struggled to keep my boat with me, trying to get it to the shore. It pulled and pulled until I realized it was me or the boat and I let go. Without the boat, I swam to shore. I crawled out of the water, completely exhausted. Shane was behind us all. He picked his way through the rocks and rapids, and I remember getting a glimpse of him floating by while I was sitting next to a rock next to Rich and Mitch. Everything happened so fast and seemed to blur. Shane only remembers floating down and getting stuck on a rock. And when he finally freed himself, he saw chaos ahead of him. Me out of my boat and Mitch's boat wrapped tightly around a rock. He somehow made it through everything to the slower water below and pulled to the side with only a boat full of water to show for it. I'm stopping the video here for this video chapter has been long enough. We are all safe at the moment. But Mitch's boat is tacoed on a rock in the middle of a large rapid. And my boat is floating downstream with no one to guide it. We have all made it to the bank, exhausted and beat. But our story is far from over. Hey guys, we survived this ship. I don't know how.